perhaps the most extreme trout fishery in the world, Laguna Verde Lodge lies in the southern deserts of Argentina, about a full day's ride from a little town called El Calafate. Other than the occasional Wanaco, a cousin of the Lama, there seems to be nothing that can live in such a harsh climate. The wind sweeps down the Andes Mountains, which are located to the west, and beat this part of the world into submission. There are no large trees, very few cattle on the estancias, and life hasn't changed here for millennia. On the ride to the lodge, you'll pass a few caldera, which are natural craters formed in the rocky volcanic landscape. In one of these natural windbreaks, you can see petroglyphs and a handprint the archeologists say was made thousands of years ago. people come halfway around the world to fish in such a wild place is to chase some of the monster rainbow trout that come into the Barracoso River in November. The river is the only large tributary of the famous Strobel Lake. It has fish that live in the river all year and if you're there at the right time you'll have a shot at some of the big fish that move in from the lake. The river starts its journey from the foot of the Andes Mountains and runs clear and cold. At 36 degrees, our hands got ice cream headaches every time we released a fish. The lower river is steeper gradient with its pools and pocket water, while the upper river is flatter and offers smoother conditions. When the winds pick up on the Barrancoso River, it is not a casual thing. In all my years of fishing, I think my time on the Barrancoso River were the windiest conditions I've ever fished in. At times, I found it impossible to take my six-weight outfit and get my cast to straighten out into the wind. Sometimes you'd watch the water literally get torn off the river and spiral into the air like a tornado. At 200 pounds, there were times when the gusts of wind would push me around so much, I'd lose my footing. If not for the ridiculous sized fish you can find in this river, I'm not sure anybody would put up with these conditions. It seemed like every time the wind would die down and let up a little bit, it was only to change into something worse. I mean, it was hard enough to cast my line, but when the wind picked up and the snow started coming in sideways and spanking me in the face, I decided it was time to call it a day and head to the lodge and thaw out. The next day, the wind took a little break. So we decided to hit some of the spots that were blown out the day before. It was fun mixing up the day where we would fish the lower, steeper gradient section of the river and then head upstream and sight cast to some big fish trying to get them to eat a mouse pattern on the surface. It's always fun fishing with Kath. She's super fishy and is excellent at spotting fish. Climbing over boulders and rocks in the lower river just to get into position to make a cast to some of these fish remind me of days when I was a kid fishing all the different rivers in Northern California. The main difference is that the fish in Northern California that I was casting to were 10 inches, not 10 pounds. One of the goals of this trip was to take a mouse pattern and skate it through some of the beautiful pools on this river. There is nothing more exciting than to see the nose of a 10 pound fish come up and take your fly. get one of these big fish to grab, the challenge is to try and put enough pressure on that fish to keep him in the pool. Even when you did your best, sometimes these fish would slide out the tail of the pool, followed by the full-on boulder hop, chasing the fish downstream to try and land it. I mean, what would you do? You finally stick that big fish and it slides downstream, your buddies are up on shore watching you, 
I guess I could have just pointed the rod at the fish and broken it off. But some of my favorite fish stories start with, well, I was running downstream chasing this big fish and... One of the things that makes Laguna Verde such a special place to fish is access to the different parts of the river. We were able to just walk from the lodge to reach the middle sections of the river. To access the upper and the lower river, we had a lot of fun using the quads to get there. And if the weather got really cold, you can always hop into one of their heated SUVs to access the water. The Barrancoso is not just all intense, fast pocket water. There are sections of the river where you need to take your time be stealthy, and belly crawl into position to cast to some of these fish. After spooking a few fish, I was politely asked by my guide Kareem to turn my jacket inside out so I don't look like a big giant red warning flag. Red looks good on film, but it's not good when you're trying to sneak up on a fish. Springtime in Argentina often means big black beetles. When action slowed down on our swimming mouse patterns, we got fish to come up to a dead drifted beetle. When we couldn't get fish to grab anything, we'd switch to a streamer and stuck fish right away. Every time we got our streamer in the right spot, we'd get a grab. just couldn't take it any longer. Watching me fish all day for these toads, she just had to hook one of these fish swinging a fly like she does when she's steelhead fishing back home in Washington State. The fish on the Barrancoso River are some of the most beautiful trout in the world. Everything about this place is wild and out of control. So when you're ready to boulder hop, belly crawl, sneak up onto some huge fish, pack your bags, hop a plane, and get yourself to Laguna Verde Lodge.